Some of the uh, uh, things that we need to take away from Chai Kiang's uh, memory project is that it really is about pulling the city together. And today, uh, I'm going to continue on this idea of integration. So one of the issues about high-density living is that it brings social differences closer. Now this bringing together social differences then creates potential for misunderstanding and potential conflict. So it's, a, it's, it's an issue that we need to deal with. Now it's not that cities in the past have no social differences. As this picture shows, social differences were restricted to the market. And after that participation in the market, different groups then retire into their own enclaves and continue their lives there. Today, the kinds of cities we face uh, have increased social differences because of new immigration in search for work, in search for study, in search of, uh, in, in the process of family formation. So therein lies the problem. The problem is how do we create these kinds of spaces? And I have four case studies. The first one is Lingam Place, uh, Hong Kong. And this is a large scale development, uh, a five star hotel mixed with uh, office and uh, shopping, and a very old neighborhood in central Hong Kong. So here you see a picture showing the different kinds of community facilities. Uh, a food court plus other kinds of amenities which are worn over by the community in, in collaboration with the government. These are concessions that the developer has, has given. We move to Singapore and the question is in a, in a place where 80% of the population live in public housing, how can we use amenities to create a greater sense of community? In this case, uh, the playgrounds could be redesigned to create uh, bonding. And here again, if uh, commercial facilities like shops and wet markets are places where everybody goes to, then how can we redesign the place such that uh, the shopper could linger a bit longer and talk to shopkeepers and talk to other residents? Next, we move to Tangpu in Taipei where community activism, along with government funding, has transformed an old sugar warehouse into a community museum that showcases the local history of the place for the rest of the city. And this is a project which requires uh, active participation. We have a retired train engineer, we have the chairperson of the Tangpu Cultural Society, we have a community planner all working together to ensure this project is sustained. The last example I want to show is in uh, Songmaesan in South Korea, where this is not about government policy, this is about an active community that has created a cafe, a food co-op, an alternative school, and a thrift shop. And I want to focus in particular the thrift shop where people could donate items that they no longer want and in place get community dollars that could be used in any of the community ventures. So the four stories that I presented very quickly raises the question of how we can create these kinds of social spaces, how they can be sustained, how they can be resourced. And as the city becomes denser, these are the kinds of things that we need because we need these kinds of spaces as bridges to deal with, uh, to, to create social integration. So the question I have is a very simple one. How do we create opportunities for participation? All right, uh, and I want to end by, by emphasizing the four uh, presentations that we've made. And, and uh, the, the four presentations deal with uh, issues that uh, the, the Asian city, the Asian high density city needs to deal with. The first has to do with how do we create opportunities all right, where everyone can win? How can we create scenarios where everyone can harvest? 
and how can we create through innovation, through programs, a, a situation where people can remember their past. And lastly, how can we create platforms where everyone participates? Thank you.